All right, John Cook, 20 years as the Nebraska head coach, over 570 wins in his career, the fifth best winning percentage in the NCAA history, also inducted into the ABCA Hall of Fame back in 2017. Your starting lineup's brought to you by Unleaded 88. You heard it, you saw it, the Nebraska starting lineup, highlighted by a sophomore setter, Nick Lynn Hames. A couple of double doubles against Penn State as a freshman last year. What can she do this year? Lexi's son as well as playing a little bit better here in the conference season. As for Penn State, also a sophomore setter, Gabby Blossom, back-to-back -back setter of the week awards, as Audrey had said. And Johnny Parker, how can she affect the game tonight? Hitting and serving. The atmosphere has already begun as we await the first serve. Fanny Center is ready to go. We're ready to go. We appreciate you joining us on a historic night here on the Big Ten Network. Showcasing volleyball on this Saturday night during the match, before the match, and we will showcase it after the match. First serve is underway. And the first swing in the attack, Jazz Sweet. Now we talked about how effective Jazz Suite needs to be tonight. You're going to see Nebraska do exactly what they did in that first play, spread out the offense, try to get her one-on-one. -on -one. That's when Sweet is her best. One of the juniors here on this Nebraska team, coming off of 10 kills against Rutgers last night, hit 400. That hit the tape. The serve from Knuckles. Penn State tries to respond. Sweet again, why not? That time, well long. Know, and that's what we have seen from Jazz Sweet in the past. You know, she's got to understand when she can get a kill, that ball at a system, maybe not the best set for her. She was trying to rip it cross court just a little wide of the court. She's been a little bit hit or miss this year for Nebraska. I mentioned she hit 400 against Rutgers. That was the fifth straight match that she's hit above 400. She takes the first three swings here for the Huskers. Allison Kathy with the swing, and Kathy actually did not play on Friday against Rutgers. Point, Lexi Sun. Well, the point, yes, went off of Lexi Sun's arm, but Nicklin Haynes with a fantastic dig. Look at this get. That is defensive passion right there, and finishing it off is sweet with a back row attack to the corner. Haynes had double digit digs last night against Rutgers as well. The setup, Blossom goes towards the middle. There's Hoard with that nice reach. Keep your eye on number 23 in the middle for Penn State. Yeah, watch Hoard come in. Ball was set a little high. You do want to stretch her out, but a little high for her. But she's got that, athletic, that athleticism and hang time. She's able to just tip the ball right over the block into the open spot. 15 sophomores and freshmen make up this Penn State roster. Hames with the deep serve to the freshman Cubic. The block is there. There's a little roof, roof, roof. Big celebration here. <laughs> the fans love it. You know, Terrell, Tori Gorell is the one that's hitting right now for Penn State. This is not her traditional spot. She's been trained as a middle blocker. So for her to swing on the outside has been new this year. She's going to have to deal with a huge block in front of her tonight. You know, she started as a middle blocker. There's the placement nicely done by Gorell. And she started out as a starter in her career as a middle blocker, then became a reserve, and now has switched sides and hits opposite for Penn State this year. Yeah, and that's a little bit of an adjustment. You know, in the middle, you have to go really fast. You're up before the set. And on the outside, you have to wait. You have to be patient and swing big in critical moments. There's the jump serve we've talked about from Johnny Parker. Right off the pump. Yeah, Cubic, what a great swing from her. I like how she takes off as Haynes is setting the ball super quick. And this is tempo backcourt attack. You see her. <laughs> 
against no block, and she just rips that ball, hits Kendall White. Maddie Kubik, you can see why she was one of the highest ranked recruits coming last year. And Penn State, their response to tie it up at four. And we talk about how important the serve pass game is, especially for Penn State when the middles are active. They are super great, so they really rely on serve receive uh, in order to feed the middle the ball. White, one of the better servers here for Penn State, gets this started. Here's Sun with the swing. Didn't get the touch. It'll be another point for Penn State. You know what Lexi Sun does really well as she hits the perimeter of the court. That time just a little long. Kendall White had a couple of aces Friday night against Iowa. Float serve approach. Again, there's the roll shot from Cubic. Guerrero puts it down. And she started out really well here for Penn State. Absolutely. And we have to mention the great defensive read by Blossom in order to play that roll shot and then a great deep hit to the corner for Penn State. Ames tries to place it over. Back set there to Parker. And she placed it perfectly. And this is what Parker brings to Penn State's offense. Even though she's back row, she is a viable option. The set is perfect, and the placement of the tip, perfect as well. Well, they're rolling now with Kendall White serving. A 4 nothing run now for the Nittany Lions. Another deep serve there for Sun. It's White who handles it. The swing from Gurrell. Yeah, net violation there. You know, what I think is very interesting is Penn State is putting Kendall White in middle back, and that's exactly where the ball goes. Good defensive setup by Penn State to start the first set. Our first time out from the Devaney Sports Center. Penn State ahead by four. All right, a five nothing scoring run, and John Cook had seen enough. He had to call a timeout. Penn State ahead now eight to four in this match. The only regular season meeting in 2019 between Penn State and Nebraska. If they meet again, it's going to have to be in the NCAA tournament. Similar situation back in 2017. Schwarzenbach has entered into the game here for Nebraska and already making her presence felt. Absolutely. Interesting defensive play by Penn State going triple block on Lexi Sun. A couple of national titles for John Cook in the last four seasons. Four total with the Cornhuskers, five total for the program. Terry Pettit, of course, getting the first national championship before John Cook took the reins. Corral again tooling off the block, and Corral is leading this match here with four kills. Yeah, I'm so impressed at how versatile she is. She's primarily an outside hitter in that rotation, has to hit right side, and she does a beautiful job of waiting and approaching very quick to the ball, keeping it over her right shoulder for a score for the Nittany Lions. Russ Rose and his vintage clipboard that he's brought with him, I think all 41 years, as being the head coach for Penn State. Sun goes tooling. And Nebraska cuts the edge here to three points. Russ Rose, he started his career way back in the, in the late 70s. Actually, was his first really job was actually here at Nebraska. He was trying to get his master's degree, and he worked. He said he was here about a year and a half and was an assistant coach before he took the head job at Penn State. Here's the block. All right at the net, try to get up and over that. So a short serve into space really limits where you can set the ball. Blossom setting it right into a double block. A better option would have been to push all the way outside as Nebraska's middles read that play perfectly. We talk so much about the Serena Grays or the Caitlin Hordes as a middle on the Penn State side. And, and obviously we have talked about the Lauren Stiverns of the world from Nebraska, but sometimes people forget about Callie Schwarzenbach. Yeah, you know, what she brings to this team is great blocking, and she holds the block with a quick attack or a 31. Down the pipe in the attempt there for Parker. Another swing for Sweet. Kathy with the attempt there, Schwarzenbach again with the top. Fans appreciate her effort at the net. 
She knows what to do with a ball that's just hanging there. She wipes it to the side. A great touch there, and then finds an open area, dominating that net. A 5-0 Penn State run has now been answered by Nebraska's 3-0 run as of late. Blossom, the short set there to Kathy, who takes the swing. They'll go right back to Kathy. Schwarzenbach got a piece. Kathy again for a third time. How about the up? Nicely done. Nicklin Hames, your setter. Digging that one out, and the finish from Parker. Oh, what a treat we're getting tonight. Great rally, great defensive gets. Hames with a key dig. Good touch there. Look at this laying out in the back court. Hames. And then Parker, cross court shot for the winner. A couple of kills now in this set here for Johnny Parker. The back set. Setting up Cubic. Point Nebraska. Nebraska doing a really good job. Haynes of setting Jazz Sweet, spreading the block out on the second attempt in the rally, pushing it all the way outside, really taxing the middle blockers on Penn State's side of the net to go pin to pin. See the numbers for Kenzie Knuckles. Remember, she is just a freshman. Was an outside hitter in high school. And trying the cross court shot there for Gray, it goes wide. She saw the opening, just right. couldn't place it down. Yeah, the block takes a certain area of the court away. As a middle, you can see what's open. You got to hit the spot. Blossom, again, trying to go down the line is Kathy. Now, miscommunication, the timing was off. Rhythm with the setter and the middle is so important, and you really have to understand when to take off. And it's a little different on transition with a high dig. The setter sometimes missets the ball, but I'm sure Nebraska will work that out. And I love the way that yep. Ames went right back right to Stiverens there after the timing was off in of the last play. Sweet again. Caught Hagen right off the block. A smart shot by Sweet, a roll shot over the block, picking on Serena Gray, who's playing left back. So she knows when the bro is back there and when the server is back there. Take a look at Gray coming in to try to make a play on that ball, unable to. That's a great shot. Tied at 11, we've already had six different ties and one lead change, and we're only in the first set. Number seven versus number eight. Back row attack, Lexi Sun. Well, you can see how they clear out space so Lexi Sun has open net to hit into. They run a slide with Stiverens. Take a look at this. And so there's lots of open court there for Lexi Sun to hit at. Open net, open court. Mentioned that her numbers are a little bit better here in conference play. Kills per set, eighth in the Big Ten, and Kathy gets it to fall. Kathy hasn't been really 100%. She hasn't been playing very much for Penn State. I mentioned that she didn't even play last night against Iowa. Yeah, they're going to really need her to get some points on the pin. You know, when she's on, she is a super great pin attacker that time, just ricocheting the ball off a block that is not well formed for Nebraska. Hitting below 100 really in the last five matches coming into tonight. The roll shot for Cubic, Penn State can't handle. Well, you talk about IQ right now, and Nebraska is intentionally roll shotting to players that they feel aren't great on defense. So a great roll shot there to Gurrell. She's not able to handle the ball. She plays it, but it goes off into the stands. Cubic serving with the first lead for Nebraska in this match. Free ball now for the Huskers. There's the slide attack. The Stiverin slide that's become so well known across the conference. <laughs> well, it's deadly and the rhythm is great and the tempo is fast. And if you're defending it, good luck. You better be up early and you better be reaching back to the middle of the court. You can see how she has the ability to wipe it off the block. So talented leads Nebraska in terms of hit percentage as that serve is long in the first service air. You know, one of the strategies is to serve deep to try to get into the serve-receive 
like almost into their chest, so they're moving back, and therefore they can pass the ball, but it is going to be past the 10-foot line. Speaking of serves, this one's one to watch. Johnny Parker, the jump serve, and that goes long as well. Nebraska fortunate, one of the best servers in the country. And Johnny Parker is so good at that jump top spin serve. And we'll see if she gets in rhythm tonight. That'll be huge for Penn State if she does. Another sold out crowd, as you can see, 266 straight. So we go back to back to back with airs now. <laughs> over 8,000 strong. And it's been that way since 2013, since moving from the Coliseum here to the Devaney Center. Son will take the try. We call that bettering the ball. Not a great pass. Hames puts up a nice high set. Lexi Son doing a great job of just going high off the blocker's hands. Nice hustle play there and a great flat hit off the top of the blocker's hands. Nothing you can do to defend a shot like that. Sun has now tied Tori Gorell for the match high in terms of four kills between each of them. Into the net. Some sloppy serving as of late. They just don't want to be tentative serving. Serving is all about routine and rhythm. You want to make sure your toss is the same, your hand, your starting position is the same. Have confidence and drive it into your opponent's court. John Cook has said we need to get six great servers going. Of course, they graduated the likes of Michaela Fecky, Kenzie Maloney, two really good servers in Nebraska's program history. Sweet again. That lefty swing has been pure in the first set. So Kubik does a great job on serve receive, putting the ball up and in the middle of the court. And then what happens is the offense is spread back and take a look at the big hole that Jazz Sweet has to hit into. So that is a great pass and a great set selection by Hames. She would love to have a good performance against Penn State. Low hitting percentage in a couple of matches last year against the Nittany Lions. Schwarzenbach and Sweet for the block. So easy to read this. You know it's going to go to the outside, this out of system play as the setter is bump setting the ball. The set is off the net, and the advantage clearly goes to the block on that. They're set up, they're ready to, to just stuff block that ball. <laughs> you saw the sign, it's yeah. a Schwarzen block yeah. from Schwarzenbach. Here's Kubik, eyes and fires and hits. Now they are fired up in here. This is awesome. Great play executing over top of Blossom, setting the ball inside so that there's a lot of line to hit into. All you need to hear is this on how it's going for Nebraska. Volleyball at its best across the country in what we believe is the best conference for volleyball in the country. Over 8,000 strong enjoying this lead for Nebraska, the Bob Devaney Center, home of Nebraska volleyball since 2013. Of course, when they made the move from the Coliseum, which had 4,000 fans. Significant because this doubled the capacity. Significant because when you double the capacity and you sell out like you have 266 straight, now Nebraska is a revenue sport for this school. You know, John Cook had a vision, and his vision was he wanted people standing in the rafters, and that's what is happening here today. Great vision to build the program, and that's what he did for this Nebraska team. It is a state treasure. Those fans you saw standing up, though, those are paid tickets, everyone. Standing to watch this volleyball match. Again, number seven versus number eight. Coming out of the timeout. We saw a shift in hit percentage from the first to the second timeout. And Sweet again, coming strong. Yeah, and the first timeout when John Cook took the timeout, the hitting percentage was super high for Penn State, low for Nebraska. It has flipped, and partly because of this kid right here. Take a look at how she's ripping the line. Perfect set, does her job, terminates. Four of the last five meetings between these two schools have gone five sets, including the last three straight. Schwarzenbach and Sweet. 
Well, let's talk about the serve and how it is impacting what Penn State can do offensively. It's a short serve. Blossom is scrambling, and there you see four hands over the net. They know that there's no middle attack. They release, making it really difficult for Penn State's off offense to score. Remember, really early in this set, Penn State went on a 5 nothing run. Nebraska is on its own 5 nothing run, and ahead 21 to 15. Blossom, the quick hitter to Gray. We haven't seen that a whole lot yet from Penn State. Well, the pass hasn't been there. So first good pass, it goes to the middle, number 16, Serena Gray, and she finds that area. You can see that Nebraska is trying to triple block her. Jazz Sweet will step in, hop step in to try to get a touch on that hit. Hames, a quick hitter of her own to Schwarzenbach. Good defense there in the backcourt for Penn State. They'll try it again, this time to Sweet right down the line and waiting for it. That was Jenna Hampton with the up. Trying for the touch and it won't fall that time. Lauren Clark getting the try at it. And Lauren Clark has not gotten a lot of playing time, but Russ Rose is trying to find the answer. Who is going to start to turn this around for Penn State? Right now they're out of rhythm. Maybe Russ Rose feeling something a little bit about Clark. Last night she hit 556 with six kills. So trying to turn things around here for Penn State with his substitutions. Again, you get 15 here for the match. Indy the Lions there respond. Clark is one of the freshmen. I mentioned that there's 15 freshmen and sophomores, but why not throw in the freshmen on a stage like this in an atmosphere like this? Here you go, kid. Here's your shot. Have fun. You know, but she does need to have fun. She needs to play relaxed and believe that, you know, she's in there for a reason. Take smart swings at the ball, and Blossom will manage the number of attempts that she'll get until she gets in rhythm. Sure, she'll go to her middle or right side. They were targeting Shore right down the line. Time and time again, they've gone Jazz Sweet's way. And why not? There's no answer right now. Penn State has not been able to stop her at all, giving her way too much line. The set is perfectly placed so that she can face cross court as she's in the air. She turns, lands facing line, hand facing line. And again, terminating every ball that she's getting. What a player she's been so far in this first set. And they rotate her out right now. She has a match high, five kills, and a hit percentage of 400 here for Jazz Sweet. Yeah, we talked in the open about how she is going to be the X factor for Nebraska, not just offensively, but that block is critical too. And she has delivered in both areas. So she's doing a tremendous job right now. Maybe playing with a little bit of her chip on her shoulder too, playing against Penn State. I mentioned that her hit percentages were down last year, but you see the Nebraska attack, the difference between the way they started and the way they're starting to finish out this set. Yeah, and you know, it's great serving, but again, Jazz Sweet has really set a tempo offensively. You see she's one-on-one. -on -one. You cannot leave her one-on-one. -on -one. You can see Penn State's middle blocker chasing her down. And even when there's Four hands in front of her, she hits smart shots. So Sweet is <laughs> doing her job effectively so far. We're talking to the Penn State coaching staff, they said unquestionably Jazz Sweet the most physical kind of pin hitter that, that Nebraska has. Right, so Penn State has to adjust. You know, if somebody is hot, your game plan has to be flexible. And so if she's the kid that's getting kills, well now maybe you commit. Maybe you read block instead of commit to the outside. You know, you're gonna read and be neutral in the middle as opposed to following Hames as she moves to the left front area of the court. Hames does a remarkable job of Looking that ball back, reversing the flow, creating those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So I'm sure Russ Rose is going to adjust the defensive strategy to stop or at least slow down Sweet. Penn State and Russ Rose have played from behind before. Just recently, they had a major come from behind win against Illinois. They were down two sets. Came back to win that in five sets. And keep in mind, this is a Penn State team that behind Wisconsin has the second longest win streak coming into tonight. They've won eight in a row since dropping one to the Badgers in Madison. Back row attack and the tip attempt. Again, Lauren Clark stays in this rotation here for Penn State. How about the up from White? 
beautifully done. Kane setting up that side attack there for Stiffrens, and it went out the antenna. Yeah, the great up from White resulted in a free ball to Nebraska. They sent their hot hitter, Stiffrens, big kill, big point. Nebraska set point. Megan Miller to serve into the net. You know, all Nebraska needs to do right now is get a strong side out. There is plenty of time, no panic at all from them. We'll see what kind of competitive spirit Penn State has. They may not win this set, but how are they going to finish the set, and how is that momentum going to build into the second set? Here's set point number two. That'll do it. The service air ends it. And Nebraska takes the first set, 25 to 18. Seven ties, a couple of lead changes. Back and forth volleyball here to start from Lincoln, Nebraska. Huskers blocked it five times. That was huge in the first set. And they take the advantage early. A set of runs, and Nebraska had the latest in the first set to take it 25 to 18 over Penn State. And serving, also key for Nebraska getting Penn State out of system. Yeah, I think this shows it perfectly. Serving to the middle, and that keeps Blossom on the run. And that means that there's only one hitter in a two-hitter rotation. And the block for Nebraska knows it's going outside. They're set up. They're big, and they're lined up perfectly. So that's been the story when you talk about how um, serving results in points, you saw it right there. Well, as good of a start that Penn State had, they, they like to maybe hit the reset button with the finish. Four players hitting negative percentages in that first set. Going back to that block, five blocks really key here for Nebraska. John Cook always has the mantra, all six. He wants two to three blockers at the net and the back row also playing a big part. Yeah, you know, defense will frustrate your opponents, and right now the defensive play for Nebraska is superb, and it all stems from the first contact of the serve. There's a reason why Nebraska is first in terms of opponents' hit percentage in conference play. Even Penn State hit below those averages in the first set. And so Nebraska looking to build on the momentum of the first set. Penn State looking to hit the reset. Nicklin Haynes with the first serve of the second set and the quick hitter to Gray. White making it look easy again to Gray. So they go back to back to Serena Gray. Yeah, Kendall White, the libero for Penn State, is playing middle back. And that's where Russ Rose feels like the majority of balls are going. She digs a ball not only up, but perfectly to her setter, Blossom. Blossom sets her heavy hitters in the middle. She's out of this rotation right now, but Kendall White at times will be asked to cover about two thirds of the court for Penn State. There's not many liberos that you give that responsibility to. Parker with the cut shot. No, Parker, what I know about her is her level of play gets better as the match goes on. She is so good in tight situations. Penn State really is going to need her to get more sets, and she's going to have to execute in order to get the second set under their belt. Penn State again, just like the first set, starting out the second set fairly strong, and Sun gets the side out for Nebraska. A great line shot by Sun. Take a look at her approach well beyond the 10-foot line. And then there you see she's finishing high hand down the line. Sun with four kills here tonight. She's gone back to back, double digit kills in all Big Ten matches here so far. And again, the middle attack. Middle attack is a kill for Penn State, but the service spot for Nebraska is still down the line right back. Kendall White doing a good job of moving her feet, getting her platform up, and that is key. If she can get that ball up in front of the 10 foot line, Blossom will do something positive with the ball to give her hitters the best opportunity to score. Caitlin Hoard, so impressive to watch the hang time that she can get, the reach that she has, the arm, the wingspan that she has. They go back to Hoard. 
Sweet, who had a big first set. And there's the roll shot from Parker. She's got a few in her arsenal. Yeah, a strategic roll shot is superb. You know, sometimes you see kids tip a roll out of necessity because the set isn't there or they don't get their feet there. Parker's so smart. She sees the hole in the middle of the court and has that top spin roll shot, drops perfectly into Nebraska's defense. There's Keaton Holcomb for Penn State. Yup, from your setter. Blossom keeping that alive. To Schwarzenbach. Blossom again, the quick hitter on her knees, but that's sailing wide there for Hoare. And Blossom forcing the ball to middle. She's on her knees, trying to set who she thinks is going to score, but on that one, boy, you've got to be able to put that ball all the way outside. morell has got to be calling for that set. Russ Rose has talked about his setter, Gabby Blossom. You see the, the range that she covered on that point. Here's Blossom to Parker. Cubic clears it. Back to Parker with a bump set for Moore. Cubic again fires. And this is point for Penn State. Yeah, ball goes long. She's trying to get that perimeter of the court. I think Cook is, uh, <laughs> yep, he's going to challenge that. I think he's going to challenge that there was a touch on the block. Our first green card. Each of these teams get three challenges in the match and you get one added if we go to a fifth set. Nebraska is challenged. And so we will take one more look at it. You can see where they were trying to go over top of Johnny Parker on that. I don't think. They're challenging a net violation. Now there's one of five things that you can yep. challenge with your green card and the net violation is here. Did you see anything on our net cam? Uh, I did not, but Stiverens right away said net, net. And you know, I, I didn't see it. I'd like to see it again. We'll go back to the net cam. We're starting it from the whole play. And so the ball hit the net, yeah. as we saw. It's, it's, I think Stiverance thought when the blocker came down for Penn State that she hit the net because right away she called it. I, uh, that's that's the play that's in question right now as the blocker was coming down, landing from, from jumping on the block. Yep. And the call stands. Yeah. There was no touch on the net. There's a look from John Cook. He's practiced that for 20 years. <laughs> Johnny Parker to serve. Get up from Knuckles. Penn State working in the backcourt. A swing from Garrell. You know, Lisa, we talked about the key players, and I really think that it's the other players that come in, your second and third best passer, your second and third best hitter. What do they do to contribute? Gorel hitting air on a perfect set, that's, that, that's going to hurt you. She's got to tighten that up a little bit on the outside. We do see some substitutes here on the Penn State side in the backcourt. And a net violation on Nebraska. Let's take a look. You know, as a blocker, you want to be so aggressive. You want to get up and over, reach over. Yes, you can clearly see number one, Nicklin Haynes, into that net. White with the good serve. Knuckles handles. Nebraska will get another chance. Out to Sun, the block. Big momentum shift, perhaps, here for Penn State as Cray with the solo stuff. Yeah, Gray stays home. She's disciplined. She knows that Lexi's son is a viable option 
offensively. She waits, reads, take a look at this great save by White. A little hop step. Right in the right spot. Yeah, I got it all with the right hand. There's got to be nothing sweeter than to shut down this building in terms of the noise level. They got a side out thanks to Maddie Kubik on that play. You know, Maddie Kubik, everyone talks about how she is such a smart player, physical. Uh, you know, she has shot, she has range, and only a freshman, Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year in high school. So this kid's a stud for Nebraska. John Cook says the moment is not too big for her. That's saying something playing in her rookie season. A slide attack there from Stiffrens. Keaton Holcomb didn't have a chance. Uh oh. Well, that's a Stiffrens bomb coming at you. You better take cover. Take a look at the approach. The defense is awesome because it's a high dig right to the middle of the court. It gives Stiffrens time to approach. Here's Parker again starting out on the backcourt in this rotation here for Penn State. There's the dump attempt from Blossom. He'll set it up. Back roll for Parker. Right at it. Gray again. Stonewall. This difference tried to do something with a tight ball. <laughs> and the block for Penn State is all over it. She calls mine. Tries to be crafty. Yeah, she wants that one back. <laughs> we said this is a matchup of the middle. Yep. Stiverance, Gray, Hoare, all American candidates at their position there. The service error for Burrell. Just as Penn State picking up a little momentum. Yeah, and we kind of saw this in the first set where Penn State came out pretty hot, and then Nebraska slowly got back into it, and then they just took off. So we'll see if that's the trend here in the second as well. Haley Dunsberger has now entered to serve for Nebraska. Here's Hampton with the pass. Kathy with the swing. Blossom again back to Kathy. She'll go back to back to her. We've seen that in this match. Has confidence in her hitter. And Sun Tulin right over the top of the block that time. Alexi Sun just chooses in that rally to stay right side. Nice five and five set out of system set. Lexi Sun goes high off the blocker's hand. She did not care that Serena Gray had a couple of blocks in the last couple of possessions. She was going to go right at her. To Gray. Gray again, a joust at the net. To Parker from the back row. Oh, that's got some power on that swing. Yeah, double contact, a tremendous dig in Nebraska's backcourt. That ball was dug so high, and I know as a setter, those are sometimes the toughest ones to get because you kind of have to wait for the ball to come down and you second guess your hand placement on the ball. But uh, great effort in the backcourt by Nebraska. A deep serve, that time from Blossom. White gets to it. She can just swallow those up, and it's Gray with the finish. Well, there you see her range. I'm talking about the libero, Kendall White, down the line. Lots of space. She runs it down, and then that higher A ball, the quick attack, it's so high, almost above the blocker's hands. Russ Rose said she's tough, she's gritty, she communicates. And Sun gets the side out. Sun came blasting in. Yeah, she's got to be Wonder. careful. Yeah. I know if she shaking something off here. The block clearly committing on her big hands. And what a great job she does. Thumb down using the edge of the block there. Yep. She came Johnny down aw yeah, awkwardly on her ankle. Lexi Sun has dealt with some injuries in her career. Of course, the transfer from Texas dealt with a back injury the start of last season. It's a nice interaction with Russ, Russ Rose and Johnny Parker having a laugh on the side here. Rose says that Parker is such a good teammate. Here's Parker with the attack. Back to Clay. Good second set here for Serena Grant. What I like about Penn State's defense is Johnny Parker goes up. She feels that there are people covering her. She can go up and rip the ball. And look at this coverage. 
gives her team the opportunity to go at it again. That's great backcourt defense and coverage on a first swing. They've tried her the second most time here for this Penn State offense. I think Lexi Sun's feeling pretty good. She looked healthy on that swing. Uh, yes, she did. She goes hard cross court to Serena Gray, who's the middle that will serve. Take a look at where this ball is placed. High five and five. Patience on the approach. And hey, why not hit it cross court to the middle block? He's outside the antenna. It'll be a point for Penn State. Back to serve is Keaton Holcomb. seniors here on this team. Out to the left pin there for Kubik. You know what Kubik is exceptional at is she approaches, delays, and then swings fast. We're going to see her elevate here, hold that arm back, and then rip it high. Learning how to hit in system and out of system. John Cook said it's one thing that is the hardest for high school athletes to learn in their first year. Parker again. She can just pull out that tip and time it. Yeah, she goes up strong and really disguises the tip. That's the key. And then you want to make sure that it's over top of the block so that the block doesn't hang and then stuff it back at you. So well placed right into the hole of Nebraska's defense. We're looking at Nebraska trying to shrink the court on this Parker serve. They know that she favors that right side of the court. Talked about that in serve pass here today. Quick hitter again, just the timing off between Stiverens. We'll try it again, still not there. And Stiverens hobbling a little bit. She doesn't look healthy And cross court, look. Nebraska though gets the point, but Stiverens looked like she was hobbling a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if she's injured or if it was just a frustration thing because she wanted to smack the ball. She comes down, transitions, back up quick, and then just fans on it, yeah, and she's a little frustrated. Yeah, she's she's staying in. <laughs> she's good. Back row for Parker. Gonna get the swing that she wanted. Back-to-back -back points now for Nebraska. You know, you talk about what's critical in a match like this, minimizing unforced errors. So if the set isn't perfect, you wanna make sure you're hitting the ball to try to block and dig for a point, not make errors into the middle of the net. Blossom out to Gura. Really good look at it. Nebraska trying to catch Penn State off guard there. And again, the timing off. Horde couldn't get around on it. And a few miscues from Penn State result in easy points for Nebraska. This crowd trying to push their team. Right now, a 3 nothing Nebraska run. The Miller serving. Again, they try Garrell on the left side. Tori Garrell, after starting out the first set, hasn't really gone her way until the last couple of possessions. Yeah, and you know, Blossom does a good job of tracking down the ball, great feet, giving Garrell something to swing at, just high, good tempo, just have your outside take a rip at it. Penn State coaching staff feels like she could be the X factor. They're looking for that fourth hitter as Cubic goes deep but a little bit too deep. Penn State looking to tie up this match. They're more than halfway there to doing it. Another sellout, 266 straight. John Cook telling the story that goes back to the year 2000 where he was motivated to make this program self-sufficient. That timeout, Penn State again with the point. Well, a great serve puts Penn, or puts Nebraska, uh, puts a lot of stress on Nebraska. Nicklin Haynes doing a great job of tracking it down, bump setting a ball almost perfectly in the five and five zone, but a hitting error again for Nebraska, an easy point for Penn State. And how about the response though for Penn State? They're playing in this environment, taking the lead in the first set, losing the lead in the first set. Challenging here to take the second set. Cubic. 
Blossom again to Parker. She's been the offensive choice here for Penn State. Long serve to Gurrell. And another kill for Tori Gurrell. Make it seven in the match. Wow, she's doing a fantastic job. Flat hit. And, you know, when the ball gets hit to Johnny Parker in the right back area of the court, she's no longer a factor as a back row attacker. So Nebraska's block went all the way outside to Gurrell, but it didn't matter because Gurrell's shot was better than the block that was set up. You saw the difference in attacking errors for Nebraska. They got to figure something out. Penn State is charging. It's a four-point advantage, Penn State over Nebraska. Again, the only meeting of the regular season here in 2019 between these two schools. That happened back in 2017. And then they met again in the national semifinal that went five sets, and that started the string of three straight. Played a couple of times even last year that went five sets. Penn State won on its home court last year, and then Nebraska, one year from ago from this day, won on this home court. And Nebraska has dominated Penn State at home. But you know what? Penn State looks like they are a different team from the first set. They're ready to go here in the second. You know, they're on a little bit of a run. As you can see, there's the slide there for Stiffer. And still, she gets the point. Yeah, that's a tip out of necessity, not strategic. <laughs> So she's hanging, and the best that she can do is tip the ball. Defensively, you have to read that. You have to see that, and you have to release. She's no longer going to smack the ball. you got to read the play a little bit better, run those tips down. So many good middles that you'll see here in this match. Of course, Dana Recchi, another good middle here for Wisconsin in this conference. And that's Gray hitting from the left pin. It'll be Penn State. They move around their middles a little bit. And placing it for Nebraska. All right, so Lexi Sun plays the first ball. She's a left side hitter. What does she do? She goes behind. Take a look at this. There she is, plays the tip, and she says, I'm going to hit on the right side. Great movement there, and that is something that that team works on. That is just, it doesn't happen by accident. If she's going to cover a tip right over top of the block, past middle, she's going to swing on the right pin. Nearly an ace there. Yeah, both of these teams have moving pieces. A good up, a fantastic up by Knuckles. There's the swing for Sun. Blossom again to Corral. Another up. My goodness, Knuckles with a couple. Blossom, the dump. To Corral to try to put it away. The block is there. Here's Parker. One of the longer rallies of the night. Sit back and watch. Points of Penn State. My goodness. Uh -oh. Both teams elevating their level of play. An exceptional rally on both sides of the net. We saw some fantastic defensive plays to keep the ball alive. Stiverin's just getting a ball that's a little too high. She's not able to execute that. A hitting error. Tough way to end that exceptional rally. Both sides of the net. Emily Shora to serve. Another one of the Penn State subs coming in. It's difference. Couldn't put it down. Here's Parker with the response. And White lets it go by. Good decision. Kendall White always seems to make the right decision in the backcourt for Penn State. Yes, yeah, she has great court awareness, and that ball goes long. A couple hitting errors, and uh, Penn State just doing a good job of extending the rallies and waiting for Nebraska to lose their patience uh, and uh, go for shots that they're just not able to execute right now. You see Kendall White right there in the middle of the huddle. In, in talking to Russ Rose at, at Surf Pass here today, I, I said, how much flexibility, how much freedom do you give your, your senior libero? And he said, well, you know what? She's, she's a leader. Yeah. We trust her decision making. And she's a little bit like me. She's a little bit of an acquired taste <laughs> to her teammates. But her teammates certainly love her and, and is definitely, no question, one of the leaders on this team this year. Yeah, uh, I remember talking to Russ about her. And he said, um, yeah, she really challenges me. We're a good match for each other. And uh, sometimes I've got a roper back in. And sometimes I just don't have enough rope. So, yeah, she is uh, she is a pistol, and she has a ton of energy, and the team feeds off of that. They are great because of Kendall White and what she brings to the court. 
not only in her talent, but how vocal she is in her leadership, as you said, Lisa. When you talk about one of the, uh, the deciding factors, she certainly could be one of those here in this match. Second in program history in terms of career digs for Penn State Volleyball. Don't miss the Wednesday night block party on BTN. Lexi Sun again, and these Huskers go against Northwestern. It's Big Ten Volleyball, powered by Unleaded 88, Wednesday at 9 Eastern on BTN, and of course, the Fox Sports app. Lots of great volleyball here down the stretch. We're in the second half of the conference season now, as we kind of turn the corner. Penn State has led the entire set. There's only been one tie here in the second. Six points away from trying to close it out and even the match. Haynes again out of that timeout to Stiffens for the slot. Yeah, definitely more in rhythm that time. And Maddie Kubik, for just a freshman boy, she has to pass. She is part of that server seat pattern. That time the ball comes right at her, angles her platform perfectly, and that results in a Stiverns kill on the slide. Kubik is targeted quite frequently by opposing teams. John Cook has said he feels like she, she is one of the best receivers here on the team. She certainly gets tested for that. Flying there on the left pin, it's Kathy. There's the tip from Gray. Some with the off speed. And Penn State gets it over. Hames from the back attack. This time with the left pin. Parker will take it. And it's a point for Tani Parker. And the bench is celebrating. And great rally. This is fantastic volleyball, folks. What a great defensive effort there, keeping the ball alive. And a great dig. Tons of heat behind that ball, but then a great save into the stands to save the second ball. Schwarzenbach that time tries the slide. We got one middle and another middle, and same result there for Nebraska. Schwarzenbach is so calm. Her emotions, not too high, not too low. You gotta like a kid like that. Nebraska handling that Kathy attempt. Here's Parker. She got the touch. Johnny Parker, last year's Big Ten Freshman of the Year. A first team All Big Ten honoree, a third team All American. All the accolades in year number one. Nearly a service ace. Haven't had many of them. And down it goes there for Caitlin Hoare. Interesting set selection at this point of the match for Nicklin Haynes. Probably not the best decision as she sets a perfect pass right into the teeth of one of the bigger blockers for Penn State. Haynes will go to Sun. The hop for Blossom. Get in there. Keeping this rally alive and give the point to Penn State, but kudos to Gabby Blossom. Yeah, look at this great read. Accelerating to the ball, never giving up. And then another hitting error by Nebraska. Points going too easy to Penn State right now. Two away from closing this one out and tying the match. Sweet with the swing. Haynes with a set up to Sun, and it's Horde who's there. Well, you talk about defense frustrating your opponent. You're seeing it right now. Gray with a great dig laying out there. And then take a look at the block right here. <laughs> yep, we talk about how it's frustrating when you're trying your best to get a kill and you're getting denied both in the backcourt and frontcourt. Seven to two run now for Penn State. Athletic move from Hampton, also from Blossom. Penn State stays alive in this rally. 
Sun puts it away. I like Nebraska's decision to keep Sun on the right side on that play, even though the, in the course of the rally, she typically goes to the left side. It's just a different look on that right pin when she's out there hitting. Our second set point. Blossom with the quick hitter to Parker. Down the pike to end it. Penn State needed a response. The Nittany Lions get a response, and this match is tied. That's right. Penn State doing a great job of adjusting. Serve received looking a lot better. And as a result, their in-system plays were bang on. Let's take a look at the last point. Going to see a great attack here. Triple block. Nebraska just not finding a way to defend the offense right now for Penn State. Johnny Parker leading the way on the Penn State side with eight kills here in this match. And this match now is tied as we bring in the head coach for Penn State, Russ Rose. And coach, you needed to reset the button from set one to set two. How did you get your team to do exactly that? Well, I mean, I think North, you know, and it's, <laughs> well, I think in the first game, Nebraska hit about 400 and we hit 9%. So. I don't, you know, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, how well they played in the first game. We had a couple of kids that, uh, you know, they're young. They didn't, uh, they didn't come ready to play in the first game. And, you know, I think that happens with, with a lot of people when they play in front of a big crowd like this. But I thought we played a little better in the second game. But, you know, Johnny always plays hard. Kendall uh, was ball handling well. I thought Jenna dug a lot of balls, and uh, Serena had a much better second game. So if we can get Serena and Caitlin going, uh, you know, I think we have a chance. You know, Coach, we've been talking about defense and how it can frustrate opponents, and it seemed like your defense um, really got elevated there in the second set. What did you like about the way uh, you guys handled the blocking and digging portion of your game? Well, I, I mean, I don't think it was really so much blocking. I mean, at one point they had they had more hitting errors than we did. So I think, you know, we kept the ball in play and, and they aired themselves out of play. But, you know, certainly we've got to, you know, for sure, you know, we need to have our small kids play play hard. And Keaton dug a lot of balls and Jenna was digging balls and Gabby has to dig balls. And, you know, that's it's not like it's a real surprise formula for people with small kids in the back row. So. You know, we have to try and uh, control the ball, and, you know, we just can't have Johnny take so many swings. We've got to get the ball to the middles a little bit and see if we can get a little more offense from the left side. Coach, thank you for the time. Sure. Johnny Parker with 23 total attacks here in this match, a battle between two top 10 volleyball teams, and we are deadlocked one apiece as we head to the third. Nebraska took the first set, Penn State took the second. And a look at the All-Americans that you'll see walking across the concourse. So much history here at Nebraska in the Devaney Center. As we bring in the Husker head coach, John Cook. And Coach, uh, uh, coach a, a difference between the first set and the second set in terms of your hitting errors and your attack errors. Three in the first set, ten in the second set. What are the corrections that you need to make? Uh, I think we got to pass better. We, we started passing Nicklin off the net, which put us in, uh, you know, out of sync a little bit. Our hitters are taking really good swings, but missed a couple, and then we started misconnecting in the middle. So we just got to get our offensive rhythm back. I think we're doing a lot of really good things. But this is kind of match. It's the way this goes. It's two good teams, and it's going to be a battle. And uh, it's point by point. So whatever teams are, whatever team is toughest in the end of these games and makes big plays is going to win. Yeah, so coach, what was the general message to the girls in the break? Was there something that you focused on to get their attention? Uh, no, just keep trusting it, keep playing. It's a battle, point by point. It's not going to be easy. Here we go. Just, you know, enjoy the competition, enjoy the battle. All right, coach, thanks for the time. Okay, you guys get to pay for the yellow card here if I get one. <laughs> I think he's fine. <laughs> After two sets, well, you see the first set and the difference in terms of the hit percentage is really a difference between both teams, between first set and second set. No question about who won which set.
when you look at those numbers. Yeah, you know, when you look at a hitting percentage, uh, kills minus errors over total attempts, and there is the story of the match so far. Um, it's been a flip-flop for both teams, and I like what Coach Cook said there. Just enjoy the competition. Don't worry. That second set is in the rearview mirror. Look ahead, uh, and don't worry about that one, and uh, just enjoy this wonderful atmosphere you get to play in right now sold out crowd again in the Devaney. 8,000 plus. John Cook telling us the story. I mentioned that part of the desire of becoming self-sufficient as a program came back to 2000 when he listened to a booster and said, hey, some of the luxuries you have is because of the football program. And that motivated him to sort of rally this fan base and the athletic department to get what we have here tonight. Cubic gets the first point out of the intermission. Nice pass to start off. You got to love it. He talked about Nicklin Haynes being off the net when she is pass or setting the ball in that second set. Way too many times that time the ball is stroked perfectly up to her. You see the national championships, some of the latest there. John Cook, the first to tell you that we watched Penn State and what they do. They set the standard of what you have to be and trying to go back corner there for Cray. They call it down. Well, they say that she got the touch. And so we're tied here at one. The Russ Rose impact, who can forget the back half of the 2000s. They had a stretch of 109 straight wins from 2007 to 2010. Yeah, that was an amazing time for Penn State and, you know, still is. They're so successful, but, you know, that really did set the standard. People started to recruit differently. He was able to bring in taller, athletic, kids with speed and size and that really changed the game for Penn State. His first year, 1979, he was paid about $14,000 to coach. He even had to drive the team bus. What a move there from Horn. A little bit different here for this weekend. Penn State got the charter from Iowa, playing at Iowa last night. He chartered in, got about in about 11.30 last night here to Lincoln, Nebraska. And he was the one who was driving the 17 passenger van back in the late 70s, early 80s. Got the touch on the tape, and there is Sweet. Like, look at Lexi's son. The ball is dropping on service. Steven she extends that competitive spirit right there, not letting the ball, not getting aced, not letting the ball hit the floor. And then Sweet, what a great tempo set to her for the kill. Middle attack for Hoare. Good up from Miller. Backcourt for Nebraska. Blossom to Parker. Gone to her now 24 times in this match. Yeah, Parker staying on the left side instead of the right. And number 22, Allison Cathy for Penn State was staying on the right side. So a little flip-flop over there trying to get Parker some different looks as she approaches and swings at the ball. Part of the magic that is Penn State. Really versatile in the front row with some of their hitters, as well as their middles. Haynes tried the dunk. Kubik up against the block and goes tooling off the edge. Yeah, they're adjusting the call here. I think they thought it went off the antenna, but it went off the block and the antenna, so the crowd quickly <laughs> adjusting. Let's see here. Let's take a good look. Here comes a swing. Off the hand first and then into the antenna. So even if the ball hit, Cubic, it, it doesn't matter. The ball hit the antenna first. A nice sniff of challenge coming, maybe. And sometimes the coaches get frustrated because they think it's an obvious thing. If everybody in the arena saw it, then why do I need to challenge it? We'll take a look again. Here comes a swing. Goes inside. So again, explain the rule to our viewers okay. of how the antenna plays a part in this. Right, so when the ball, if, if Cubic hit the ball into the antenna, it would be out, it would be Penn State's ball. 
to me it looks like the ball hits the antenna, but after it hits Parker's hand. Okay. And they're seeing the replay here. They're actually showing this exact replay in house. That's why you hear the yeah. cheer from the crowd. You know, and this is what I love about John Cook. He lets his assistants take control of the timeouts and he allows them that opportunity uh, to strategize with the players. And I think that's one of the reasons why people love to work for John Cook. He trusts his staff. Kayla Banworth is one of his assistants. She's actually an Olympian, won a bronze medal. Brings her up all the time, a national team libero, and was a former Nebraska walk-on. Here's the decision. Good challenge. And John Cook is furious because he thinks it was such an obvious play. He didn't, he didn't want to waste his he challenge on no, that. No, at, not at all. And so now they only have one left here, unless they go to a fifth set where they'll get a challenge added. Penn State has yet to use one of its three. Stiffens the big block. Mark this down as maybe a momentum changer here for Nebraska in this set. I would agree, Lisa. Let's take a look. The ball is passed perfectly and really doesn't force the blockers for Penn State to move at all. So you've got to try to set into space a little bit more, create some scenes of the block. Cubit gives it right back. Audrey, you have said that managing errors would be so key for both of these teams. With service errors, attack errors. And you see six of them right now in this match for Nebraska as Parker gives it right back. You know, the other thing about errors, you want to know how to play ugly well, because not every play is perfect. So, you know, in these plays that sometimes don't go right to the setter, non-setters touching the ball, you want to be able to manage those points and don't have those points turn into errors. Dunsberger, the junior, back in. What, what? Correll, she read that the entire way. Great vision to see where the right side digger is. Way down the line here. Goes up, pulls, and then nice little touch there. And you have to play down the line against Nicklin Hames because there's so much line to hit at. If you come charging up, that ball's going to hit you right between the eyes. This could possibly be Tori Gurrell's last time she takes on Nebraska. Played some really meaningful minutes in that 2017 matchup in the semifinals. The touch is there for Nebraska. No way to defend that shot. High off the blocker's hands, lots of spin on it. Impossible for the backcourt, Penn State, to track that ball down. Tori Garrell and her numbers. She had a big first set. Eight kills here on the match. You saw it, she's hitting 312. There's the high reach from Gray to be able to keep that one alive. Sweet got blocked. Here's Sun this time trying to tie it. She goes over the top of the block for the touch. Good coverage on that first attack. Just balanced, being down low and ready, expecting the ball to be blocked on a five and five out of system set. There you see great play, high ball to the outside, and then that flat shot off the blocker's hands. Lexi Sun just looking at the block like, yep, I beat you. <laughs> White handling that, Parker again. Down the pipe, Parker, one of her signature shots. Here she is again in the back row. Son, that was a high set. Ball hits the antenna on Lexi's son's hit. She was trying to go down the line, trying to put it into the right back area of the court for Penn State. Hits the antenna, so out of bounds. attacking errors here for Lexi Sun in this match. Ames had to come over to get it. Here's the bump set for Sweet. Good up in the challenge there at the net. It was Kathy and Sweet. How about the block for Gray? Yeah, 
take a look at the defense here. Awkward rotation for Nebraska with Jazz Sweet, the lefty being on the left pin. And she tends to go cross court across her body, a perfectly placed block by Penn State. Tied again at eight. Nebraska lost recently to Purdue in West Lafayette. That snapped a five-match win streak. Beat Rutgers last night. And just behind the likes of Penn State, Minnesota, and Wisconsin in the standings. With setters, you talk about the apex of the ball, the highest point of the ball. It needs to be out toward the hitter. If the ball is dropping into the blocker's hands, that is a tough shot to score on. So Blossom with a not so great set to the outside, not giving her hitter the opportunity to score. Getting the touch there is Kathy. You know, it's these subtleties with setting uh, that sometimes you they go unnoticed. So, you know, the, you've got to give your hitter the opportunity to hit, jump at the highest point, reach at the highest point, wherever along the net that the play is that you call. So little subtle things about setting that are so important. Two sophomore setters, one on each side of the net, one for each team. Both bring a little bit of a moxie to this team. They cover a lot of ground. Here's Haynes trying to set up Cubic. White again, defensively. Parker with the swing. White just shadows everyone. She's everywhere. Cubic again with another opportunity. Gets the touch. A display of Big Ten volleyball at its finest right there. Multiple swings before the rally ends. Cubic with a veteran move for just a freshman, that flat hit off the blocker's hands. Three players for Nebraska, including Cubic. 20 or more total attacks. You got Jazz Sweet with 21, Cubic with 27, and Sun with 28. Penn State gets it over. One-handed set for Stiffens. <laughs> That started with the serve. Penn State scrambling on their side of the net. They throw a free ball over. Nebraska in system with a shot to the corner. Somehow Haynes and Stiffrens are going to try to make it work tonight. <laughs> Quick hitter for Penn State. Somebody lost it on the Nebraska sky. And the Nittany Lions will take it. Yeah, miscommunication there. But you know what I'm impressed with with um, Nebraska actually on that play is they're getting touches off the middle attack for Penn State. So Penn State's not going up and laying down bombs. They're getting touches. That ball should have been up, and there should have been a transition swing. Gray with the swerve, serve, and Sweet with the swing. Another kill for Jazz Sweet. Seven on the match. Ah, neck and neck. I love the rhythm of this one. <laughs> you know, it's attack and counter attack and lots of great aggressive serving we're seeing from both sides of the net. Just what you would expect from these two rivals. 12 combined national titles between these two programs. All Americans, a plenty. Potential Olympians coming up in 2020 for both these schools. The swing from Cubic in top town. Stiffrens got it. Any ball that's just hanging on the net. Stiffrens, look at the fans, they love her. What a great bump set behind her head. Knuckles with that one. And then Stiverin's a ball right at the net. She's going to just slam it down. Epic battles between these two programs. Perhaps another three straight times. It's gone to five sets between Penn State and Nebraska. Hayes back set on the slide attack for Stiverin's. She was trying to call for it. She's asking John Cook to make his final challenge, he reluctantly stands up. Stiffrens was trying to campaign her coach. He's got one left. He's got the green card in his hand. Nebraska challenging a touch on the block. And 
that will be his final challenge of the match unless it goes five. Right, and that's that's crucial because the way this one's going, he may, you know, want some other challenges. Unable to use them, though, if he used the last one right here. Let's take a look and see if there is a touch. From that camera angle, you think? I think it touched uh, Parker's pinky yeah, right there. I, I, yeah, the ring finger. Yeah, yeah. or even yeah, the yeah. pinky or the yeah. ring one finger. Of those. One of them. Yeah. Great elevation there. Mm. I love it. Yeah, it, it does. It does look like there was a touch. Well, difference emphatically after this swing came down and emphatically was making her plea to the coach on the bench. And remember, John Cook did not want a challenge in his second challenge. Yeah. And if he didn't have to challenge, he would have at least one left. But you see that finger, it's moving. Yeah, this is great. It's an awesome great shot right there. Great yeah. job by our crew. Yeah. Got the touch. Stiffens was right. You know, every point matters. Uh, they they reset every time they go back to serve, and you know, a lot of times these sets come down to one or two points. So that that's critical. And so Nebraska out of challenges now. Russ Rose and Penn State yet to use one of their three. Short serve that time. Haven't seen many of those. Here's Kathy down the line. And yeah, Maddie Kubik for Nebraska getting lost on that play. Gonna let her right side hitter go. And as a result, Penn State just hammers it down the line. So great vision by Blossom to set that space, knowing that the blocker for Nebraska was moving in the opposite direction. Hames to Stiverance. Kubik puts it away. Nebraska, the first to 15 in the third set. Number seven, number eight. Match tied at one. Two of the elite volleyball programs in the country. Sit back, enjoy volleyball theater tonight. Like the way set number three is going here for Nebraska with a four point edge. Match is tied at one between Penn State and Nebraska. The sellout streak continues. 266 consecutive sellouts, 8,373 in attendance. Literally standing room only. Yeah, they are having fun. It is the hot ticket in town. Nebraska returning home this weekend after two straight on the road. Huskers a game back going into tonight of Minnesota and Penn State in second place. Everybody right now chasing Wisconsin atop the standings. And Penn State getting the side out, out of that timeout. Maddie Kubik bump setting a ball <laughs> clear over the net. And then she sort of laughed at herself like, gosh, that was really, really bad. <laughs> Tony Parker hasn't yet been able to get that serve down. Oh, just inches away. And, and even as a service error, that is beautiful to watch. Two legendary coaches, Russ Rose, 40 years in the making. John Cook, 20 years at Nebraska. I love when you asked him in the pregame, do you have 20 more years left in you? What'd he say? He said, nope. <laughs> and it was a quick note, too. Blossom with the back set to Hort. Cubic getting the touch. Penn State coming with the defense. Corral has been huge. Yeah, you saw great touches off the block as a block. Of course you want to stuff block the ball, but you actually, if you slow it down, you give your team an opportunity to transition and score. Corral, great movement off the net, off of the touch of the block, and then finds that cross-court shot. Lots of range, great competitor right there. Hit 353 in this match. That's been the case for her really the last six matches. She's hit above 300. Hames had to chase that one down. That is a deep set and crazy there. 
Serena Gray holding that ball or holding the block, pressing and holding, eliminating that seam. Ah, yeah, Blossom's pumped. That's what I love about Gabby Blossom. Yeah. She's got a little moxie to her. Absolutely. Fun kid to watch. Doesn't matter that she stands at 5'9", and part of that double block, Penn State gets the point. From earlier today, some of the fans who can't even get into this place because it's sold out, the Rail Yard District, of course, the Haymarket and Rail Yard are right next to each other. These fans, I'm telling you, when you go on a Saturday night, even prime time on a football Saturday, bars in Lincoln are packed with fans watching volleyball on a Saturday night. Yeah, and you know what? For someone of my generation, it is great to see how the women's game has evolved and the fan support. Uh, it, 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 it just warms my heart. I love it. They pack the bars downtown and they pack it inside the Devaney Center as well. Penn State, an important side out there. Cuts the lead to one here in this set. And back to serve again, Kendall White. She had a couple of aces last night against Iowa. They'll target Cubit again. And Sun puts it away. You know, and John Cook said, I hope they serve Cubit. I've got a lot of faith in her serve receiving. Right now, it is right on the money and allowing the setter, Nicklin Hames, to run her offense. So Cubic, a key person on the team right now, not only on the front court, but what she's able to do to balance serve receive in the back court. We've seen a lot of freshmen make an impact immediately in this Nebraska program. Talk about Hames and Schwarzenbach last year. Michaela Fecky, a huge freshman year when she came into Lincoln. Maddie Kubik maybe the next to that chapter. Good up. Knuckles. Sun trying to go deep. And again, it's White who eyes it and lets it go by. Yep. Uh, Sun was trying to go perimeter deep down that line. Miss hit it. No challenges, even if they thought it was close or a touch. No challenges available. <laughs> Look at the energy again from Kendall White. You got Gabby Blossom and Kendall White on the Penn State side. A couple of fireballs here for the Nittany Lions, and I love it. You know, in serve receive, you're going to see her talking to the other passers. Yeah, look at that communication. And then focus on the ball. Nip and tuck here in the third set. Sun, really good serve there. That one going wide. Kathy was going high off the hands, couldn't get it. Serving strategy right now for Nebraska. We'll see Lexi's son probably serve down the line. That's what she did the last time. Resulted in a nice point for them. He calls Penn State to call the timeout. Behind now by three points. Appreciate everyone who's tuned in here on this Saturday night, getting involved on the social media world. Hashtag BTN Block Party. We've been doing it all season long. It actually started. The hashtag and our block party started right here on this very floor when Nebraska took on Stanford. So we go across the Twitterverse and see what you guys are talking about. This brand new Husker fan. Oh, look at this for the BTN Block Party. A big Husker win over Penn State. That's what they're cheering for. Congratulations on the new one, too. Some Husker fans here. Looks like in attendance in the building. Reception must be good here at the Devaney Center <laughs> to get that tweet out with 8,000 plus in the building. Again, hashtag BTN Block Party. And I uh, wonder how easy it is to watch upside down. Go to Huskers. <laughs> Keep tweeting us and we'll, we'll pick out some of our favorite tweets and maybe we'll get it here on the telecast. Watching two historic programs, 12 combined national titles. Look at the overall win percentage. You talk about Final Fours, NCAA appearances. It's almost like a given, right? When you're, when you're talking about Penn State and Nebraska just making it to the NCAAs, it's only a matter of how far they will go in the postseason. Yeah, you asked me one word to, decri to, to describe Penn State and Nebraska volleyball, and uh, champions is what comes to mind. They are 
Uh, they have set the bar for other programs to uh, reach, and uh, there you see their resume. John Cook, Russ Rose, two of the finest in the program. 1990 was the first meeting between these two coaches. Cook was actually assistant at Nebraska, and it was right after Penn State had joined the Big Ten. They met in the NCAA tournament. Nebraska won and then got to the Final Four that year. Gray puts it away. From the second set on, Serena Gray has had a presence. Yeah, she has elevated her game, and even though she's tipping the ball right now, she's managing to tip in an area that's been, you know, difficult for Nebraska's right side defense to handle right now. Hames to Schwarzenbach. In that connection between setter and middle and the quick hitter, timing seems to be off as Hames tried to chase it down. Point to Penn State. Just like that, Nebraska only up by one. Penn State coming out of that break on fire. Two easy points. And the Nittany Lions doing a great job trying to generate their own energy in arguably the most hostile volleyball environment in a way team can play. Cubic. Blossom covering all kinds of ground to chase that down. Aims to sweep. There's White again, a little bit too much though. Didn't get the contact that she wanted. But you can see why Kendall White is playing middle back because, you know, she's able to get that area of the court that the block may not get in time. So, you know, as Jazz Sweet swings middle back, Kendall White's there. How many coaches ask their libero to cover the amount of ground that Russ Rose does with Kendall White? <laughs> Well, you know, if you have a player as good as Kendall White, it would make sense that you would do that. But not every libero can do that and, and actually embrace that challenge. So Kendall White wants all the balls to come to her, and she's like, hey, give me the whole court. I'll find a way to keep the ball off the ground. This Penn State coaching staff coming off that Illinois match where they came from behind the win it. They called it a street fight. They described this series with Nebraska in a similar fashion. There's Stiffrens. It's been a while since we've called her name. Yeah, Stiffrens is known for going behind the setter. That time, quick attack right in the middle. Take a look at this. Again, the pass so important. You can see that the timing is slightly off. It's not a straight down hit, but it's hit in the open area right there between middle back and right back. Miller targeting White that time. Big swing from Parker on the left side. Here goes Parker again. She gets it that time. Boy, she's impressive to watch. Absolutely, and I love her on that left side in that serve-receive pattern. And they just stay. They don't switch back to their specialized positions, if you will. There she is going over top of Nicklin Haynes. First one was down the line. Second one ripped cross court. There's a champ right there. John Cook has said if there's one player we don't want to get on a run, it is her right there. It is Johnny Parker. She can get hot in the jump serve and hot as a hitter. Kubik with the touch. They go to the freshman in a clutch opportunity. Yeah, talk about a hot hitter. Kubik, smart shot again. Block is being held by Stiverens as she runs the slide. Kubik cleaning it up on that left pin. Nebraska, 3-0 run. Maddie Kubik, John Cook said she had to learn how to hit out of system when she came here early. She was one of the players that came early. She got hit in the face about five times before she learned how to hit out of system. Corral right off the block. Fans are loving it. Look at this. Great movement. Ames making sure that the seam is covered as she moves her hands. And then the celebration. <laughs> Big point there for Nebraska. This is where you got to wonder if this crowd and this environment is worth a couple points.
when it comes to crunch time. Maddie Kubik is worth a couple points here tonight. Well, she sure is. 11 kills on the night, hitting 24%. Take a look at those big swings. And what I like is the number of errors that she has. It's really low, so even if she's not getting kills, she's keeping the ball in play. That is, you know, really important. You know, to manage the game, manage the errors, not give away points. So Kubik right now, huge for Nebraska. At 22 kills just a few matches ago. And the most by a freshman, you got to go back to Michaela Fecky back in 2015. And think about the freshman year that Michaela Fecky had. And any time you can attach your name <laughs> with a freshman year like that, you're doing something right. Oh, absolutely. Fecky was a stud, still is a stud. Cubic matching that kind of performance her freshman year. With the match tied here at one, Nebraska a couple points away from going ahead in this match. Maddie Kubik's numbers tonight. She has five of her 11 in this set and hitting above 240. What you don't see there is the contribution on serve receive, critical for her team as well. Blossom to Parker, wouldn't you know it? Again, out of that timeout, always fascinating to me to see whose number is called after a stoppage in play. Well, it's the one who has the guts to make a big play when your team needs it. That's Parker all the way. Smart shot, high, off the blocker's hands. Parker still can't get that serve to fall. Crowd on its feet. here. John Cook knowing ha, huh, that was a tough battle. Cook knows it. Great movement there. Yeah, right in the hole. Ha, <laughs> the bench is going crazy. We appreciate you tuning in. Both of these coaching staffs talk about just the impact of having matches like this on TV. We're happy to bring you unprecedented coverage here on the Big Ten Network. The fact that we had a, a pregame show for the first time in network history. Nicklin Hames is fired up. She can smell a victory here for Nebraska. They're just one set away from closing this one out. And our thanks to the crew who's, who's worked a little bit of overtime to give you this kind of unprecedented volleyball coverage here tonight. Here in Lincoln and in Chicago. Led by Rick Pizzo and Michelle McMahon there, part of the pregame coverage. We'll have post-match coverage as well tonight. So we begin set four. Penn State was able to rebound in the second set. What can they do here in the fourth set after trailing? There's the cut shot from Parker. That was a great thumb down. That's a tough shot to defend. I don't know if there's a defense uh, that can play that sharp of a shot, but you can see what Nebraska came out of the gate with, a short serve to number 16, Serena Gray, and then getting a touch on the block, but it didn't matter because Parker with a kill to get that first point. And Schwarzenbach fouls it up. She's a sophomore. Let's put this in perspective. We have freshmen and sophomores who are playing to this level on this stage tonight. Yeah, and it is, you know, like you said, fantastic volleyball. This is 
great control, great execution of game plan, and then rebounding when a team kind of forces you to do things that you don't want to do, you rebound after that. So it's, it's great volleyball. Big Ten volleyball at its finest right here. Three-point pass opportunity there after the good first contact from White. But now Nebraska has a chance. Sweet again, another opportunity. Cubic, off speed. Such a tough ball to defend. Take a look at where the defense is, perimeter defense. They've got to go deep with her, and then she disguises it with a high hand. Good top spin on that ball. It comes out of her hand perfectly. Lots of spin. Makes that ball go hit the ground a little bit faster than uh, a ball that doesn't spin with top spin. One of the four players in double digit kills here tonight. She's got 12. And Horde just attacked that block. Yeah, Horde hits so high above the net that if you don't get a clean block or a touch, it's going to ricochet off the block as that one did. Good point for her. One of the best hitting percentages in the country. Penn State build on this. Holcomb serving. Oh, what a block! I guess one of the better middles in the country. Yeah, you've got to take an angle away, and that time they took that left back shot away, and that's exactly where Stiverns went with it. Take a look. She's approaching that way because the ball is passed to Haynes and she's moving back. So that is her hard shot to the left back corner. Penn State's block doing a good job of lining up against her. Sweet goes to it. Yeah, you don't want to be flying out when Sweet is swinging at the ball. You want to plant, you want to get there and go straight up and over. She gets a ton of sets, so you have to expect that she's going to get her fair share of swings here in the fourth set as well. Parker, a pancake from Knuckles. They'll go back to Parker again, why not? Miss Stiffern's getting caught up in the middle. She feels like she has to stay with Penn State's middle blocker, but it opens up a ton of area right now for Johnny Parker to swing into. No service aces between either team. This is the bread and butter for Johnny Parker. Hasn't gotten it to fall, wouldn't you know it? There it is. Great toss over her right shoulder, jumping big, landing into the court. Take a look. She just lets it rip, and that's exactly where she wants to hit the ball, where she tends to hit the ball, right in the left back area. It's all about the toss. She tried to go for it again, again, inches away from getting that down. Yeah, you can see a little frustration. She's used to stringing a couple points together on her serve. And it was, you see them packing that yep. side there. That was something that they were focusing on on serve pass for considerable amount of time earlier this afternoon. Correll right down the line. A, a great set selection there in terms of where the placement of the set is. They're bringing Correll in a little bit. They set a three inside the antenna and that opens up the line over top of a smaller block. Oh, Blossom, what a setup. Gabby Blossom, are you kidding me? On your knees, the bump set. Yeah, she has got speed and then she's gutsy. Look at this, tracking this ball down, bump setting, a perfect ball as she's moving. That is talent right there, Gabby Blossom. Her coaches say she plays as hard as anyone they've been around and not afraid to make the play. And there's an example there, Cubit hit it long. Here comes Penn State. You talk about hitting errors, and your offense is doing something that they're not used to doing. You've got Haynes moving back to set the ball and kind of setting a back row attack out of necessity, not because that was her first option. Oh, a five to one run here for Penn State, taking on a Nebraska team that has to deal with a lot of emotion this week and the death of graduate student manager Dane LeClaire died earlier this week at the age of 22. So important here to this team. They wore those warm-up shirts with LeClaire 
on the front, that number four. He was a player at Loyola Chicago, with each other, for each other, playing with his memory for the rest of the year. Four-point edge here for Penn State. What do you think that conversation was with John Cook and his team that last time out? Well, they just have to play better. Again, the errors on uh, their swings are causing them to lose some points here. So instead of extending the rally, they're ending the rally with errors, and you don't want that. So Cook uh, just wants to get a little bit of a break, but he knows that this is going to be a dogfight. It's going to come down to the nitty-gritty. Remember what I said, who do you go to out of the timeout? You go to your All-American. As Stiverance looked a lot more in rhythm, the hand-to-ball contact was better. The set height was, uh, was perfect for her on that play. A first-team All-American last year. The third highest mark in school history, but Nebraska can't get that one. Side out now for Penn State. Stiverance out, knuckles in. Tori Gurrell, who's hitting above 300 here tonight. It's been so important for this Penn State attack. White, and you don't see it too often, but just not the first contact you want. Yeah, and uh, Schwarzenbach right there with a slide. One-on-one, -on -one, you know, she's going to be able to put some heat behind the ball. Good aggressive swing by Callie Schwarzenbach. There's a point last night. Callie Schwarzenbach had four kills in the first six points. She can go on a little bit of a run here for Nebraska, perhaps. Blossom setting up Kathy, who is skying there for that swing. A little too much behind it. So what I saw there is the ball is dying, and um, Allison Kathy just racing to get to the ball and really not getting uh, the ball at the highest point. And so ball's too far out in front, just out of rhythm in terms of height and tempo to Kathy. There's Parker. Getting the touch, Lexi Sun. Well, you can see when Johnny Parker tips the ball, it gives the advantage to Nebraska. They play it, read it perfectly. Nice high set. But again, it's that critical shot, the high off the blocker's hands. Lexi's son having a heyday with that shot tonight. Well, they seemed a little bit more fooled at the beginning of this match. Good placement there for Kathy, but when you see a, a, a Parker off speed time and time again, it's you're, you're able to time it a little bit better as the match goes on. Right, it's a tip, like I said before, out of necessity rather than strategically tipping the ball. So um, when you're out of rhythm and there's nothing else that you can do except tip a roll. Overpass to Parker, but Nebraska handles it, and Sun puts it down. Yeah, and that's a strategic roll shot right there. She went up strong, saw the defense, knows that the middle of the court is open, uh, and so a, a nicely executed roll shot, lots of top spin off of her hand. It's nighttime, but they see the sun here. The fans <laughs> do in Nebraska. Lexi's son, her goal is to be a little bit more well-rounded here this year. Now a junior in year number two, playing for Nebraska after transferring after a freshman year from Texas. Gray, she saw that wide open space in the back corner. Yeah, and you know, when you get a touch off of one of the middle attackers for Penn State, that's a positive play, actually. So Lexi's son should have tracked this ball down. She's playing too far to her left as Gray hits that ball and is facing uh, right back. Again, Penn State trying to go deep with the serve. It has not been a successful choice for them tonight. The 10th service error for the Nittany Lions in this match. They still hold a one-point edge in the fourth. Got to win this set to keep this match going. Sweet. Fantastic defense, putting it away is Kubik. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jenna 
Hannah Hampton got a great dig off of Jazz Sweet's tough swing. Take a look, but you can't just dig it up. You've got to keep it on your side of the net. <laughs> Number 10, Maddie Kubik, just all over it, making her pay for that, for that dig over the net. Oh, salivating over it. Oh, they guess they call the net violation. Ah. Yep. State gets out of it. And how about this? Let's go back and, and take a look at it. Yeah, I didn't see the net violation, but let's take a look again. Going up strong. Yeah, oh, clearly. Did. Yes, clearly. Three-point edge now for Penn State. Sweet. Going cross court. You know, you can't defend anything when a hitter hits deep cross court. You know, the block can adjust a little bit to take that shot away. But the problem is, is Jazz Sweet will then rip it down the line if you give her too much line. That's what makes her a great player. The fourth player on the Nebraska side, now a double digit kills for the match. She's at 10. Quick attack. Stephens there with the step. Difference, a big block on Caitlin Hoard. The ball was actually a little bit behind Hoard. You're going to see it here. And she swings right into Stiverens. Yeah, fired up for sure. Again, Penn State has had some resilience in them. After they lost to Wisconsin, the last time they lost, they said it hardened them. In the air there for Nebraska. That loss hardened Penn State. They felt like they let that one slip away. They haven't lost since losing in Madison. 18 combined service errors between the two teams. They rallied from behind against Illinois to win in five. Trying to rally from behind again here tonight in Lincoln. Russ Rose trying to find somebody with an aggressive serve. Number 21, Peed got entered there and starts off with a service error, but she'll stay and be in the serve receive pattern for Penn State. Blossom setting up Horn. Here's an example of Penn State swinging out their middle to the pin. Yeah, and a, a good tip. You're going to see Stiverns did not go up for the block. And so your job, if you're not able to get up for the block, you'll see it here. Your job is to get the tip. That is her job, to call and get the tip. And you can see she kind of cringes. She knew she missed that ball. Slide attack for Stiverns. That one was almost down. Almost down there for Penn State. Yeah, a little closer than maybe <laughs> Nebraska thought they were calling it out, but boy, that was pretty close. Stiffens with 12 kills now in the match. Look at that. Yeah, that's what we call balance, a nice balanced offense right there. A lot of people involved, big numbers, double digits. Carell's had a big night. She's got 12 kills. Going to put that away. Good up that time in the backcourt. That's Peed who has entered in for Penn State. Off speed. Tied at 15. Nicely done. Lexi's son getting the tip that's right in the middle of the court. And the only option really was Schwarzenbach, and she finds an open area to tip into. Got three receivers there for Penn State sitting in the backcourt, and that serve went way long. For the Mitten Lions, number 22, Allison Kathy. Back to serve, number 11, Lori Burrell. Kathy re-enters here for Penn State. Number one, Nicola Haynes. Three littles in that last rotation, and Nebraska tried to challenge them. Just the one service ace all match between the two teams. Schwarzenbach. Right at Kathy. Kubik.
passing up a perfect pass, and Nicklin Hames trying to spread the offense out a little bit, goes to Schwarzenbach, but Schwarzenbach really limited herself to a cross-court shot. Penn State was all over it. Eight blocks in the match for Penn State. Here's Sun. Oh, what an up for White. Can Kathy get to it? You know, that's where a non-setter putting up a five and five, you have to keep it five feet off the net and hopefully five feet in from the sideline so your outside hitter can do something with it. A great dig and then Gorel trying to bump set behind her head. Oh, just keep it off the net. Those are those unforced errors. You know, play ugly well. Keep the ball off the net. Give your hitter an opportunity to swing. Again, it's a must-win set for Penn State to force a fifth set. Eleven blocks on the match now for Nebraska. Look at the stud sun going up. Bang! <laughs> They love it. Good reaction from Blossom. Kathy in the other up. That's Hampton again. Parker. Ball now for Penn State. Blossom will set up her favorite target for Parker. And it's Knuckles waiting for it. Puts it in the way, son. Nebraska taking the lead in the fourth. First lead to two is two to one. Shining brightly. 9.44 local time. Doesn't matter when you're indoors and you got Lexi Sun who's picked up the slack a little bit here for Nebraska. Yeah, she saw only one block in front of her and she felt it coming. Went in, explosive attack. <laughs> Big point for Nebraska. But this is a good lesson here for setters. As the ball is being served, you have to keep your eye on the ball. A lot of times they focus um, on the serve receiver and lose track of the ball. Blossom saving that point. And then what a rally we had here. Free ball to Penn State. That's usually an opportunity for a big point, but Knuckles with a great defensive get. And then there you see one-on-one, -on -one, Lexi Sun. <laughs> I like the run to that. <laughs> We've talked so much about Kendall White on the Penn State side, but, but Kenzie Knuckles, as a freshman, trying to kind of relearn that position, committed to Nebraska as a sophomore in high school. She's recruited as a libero. She played as an outside hitter at the high school level. You see that sometimes at the, at the high school level. But she played beach volleyball instead of club volleyball late in the 2018 season to improve her ball handling uh -huh. and her defensive skills. Yeah, yeah. You'll see beach players having exceptional court awareness. Um, the sand helps um, make their movements even quicker on the regular court. So, yeah, it's a great strategy to, to cross train both indoors and beach. 21 digs on the night a couple of assists to her tally. Again, Nebraska graduated Kenzie Maloney, the libero the last couple of years. Kathy, <laughs> right at the block. Boy, that's an important point for Penn State. It sure is, and the serving strategy again from Nebraska is to serve short, take a look at where this ball goes. Middle is out. You know the ball is going to the outside, but when you're as talented as number 22 there, Allison Kathy, you're going to find a way to score. Schwartz and Bach. Great up from Parker to keep that alive as she tries to finish it. Sun again. Nittany Lions will take the lead. 
So these are the moments in the match. I love to see the competitive spirit and uh, the level of focus on both sides of the net. This one can go either way. We'll see, um, you know, if one team manages their errors a little bit better than the other team. Mm. Parker. The ball handling here for Penn State. Here's Sonica. Classic example of learning how to play ugly. Nothing looked great there, so you just, when you have the opportunity, you put it high. Look at this, ping-ponging back and forth. When you get the chance, you put it high. Lexi's son will clean it up. <laughs> Kathy is challenged. And she meets it. Yeah. Doing a, a really good job of making herself available on that right pin. Despite the short serve, it's handled well by Penn State. They go with a high option to the pin. Got to take a very business-like approach here to try to close out the fourth. Whitney Lyons trailing by a set. What a net violation. And another point for Penn State. Ball is passed tight here. Watch Nicklin Hames trying to save the ball. And as she's coming down, you can see, yeah, she's in the net. So Penn State four points away here from evening up this match. Lots to still watch, stay here. From the concourse level, you look at the Rio Olympians from 2016, handed down to Jordan Larson's jersey. And our State Farm state of success, not only with Nebraska, but Penn State, some of these players. It's an ever-fluid kind of roster right now determining the 2020 <laughs> team, but these are some of the players who are in the mix. Yeah, Karch Karai, the coach of the national team, loves these two programs because they develop players and they've been a consistent pipeline to the national team. These kids know how to play the game. They're well-trained and they compete at a high level. It's a crucial moment in the match and this crowd knows it. Oh, Cray, what do you say? Ha, that's a great serve out of a timeout. You know, the timeout is to ice the server, so to come back with such an aggressive serve, it's remarkable. Good job. The only Gray. two aces in this match coming from Penn State. Three nothing run. Big side out for Nebraska. Nip and tuck time between these two teams. Parker getting the touch. What a play! A really smart play from Jazz Sweet. Yeah, you know, it, you know that your team, the opposite team, is covering really tight, and you just got to put it in the open area of the court. Great heads-up play by Jazz Sweet, taking it, seeing where the open corner is. You can see White doing her best attempt at saving that ball, not fast enough on that play. Doesn't have to be textbook, just has to be efficient sometimes. <laughs> You're right. Now a one-point edge here for Penn State. White with the first contact. Here's Kathy, puts it away. Boy, she's been big. Now if Cook had a challenge, that would be one that I'm sure he would like to challenge. She thread the needle right there on that one. That was right on the line. Look at John Cook. He might be thinking exactly that. Remember, he took a, a second, his second challenge he did not want to take tonight. It was a play that hit the antenna, and he thought it was obvious, but it was not called that way on the court. Another surface ace. Three of them now for Penn State. Yeah, they held on to the aces until the fourth set, and then back-to-back -back aces here. Two players coming through big. Hey, that's your job, kiddo, and she does it well. Going back, adding some pressure. Welcome again. How about that? Penn State rallies to win it. Hey, when you get the nod to go in and be the service specialist, you show what you can do. Look at her teammates love her. That is a critical couple serves by number 12, Keaton Holcomb.
You know, we talked about how it's so important for the other players to play well, not just the key players. Holcomb coming through huge on that one for Penn State. She's one of the few seniors on this Penn State roster. And the last time she will take on Nebraska in the regular season. Keaton Holcomb, one ace in the fourth. How about another ace in the fourth? And then the third and final. We are gonna play five in Lincoln. Well, in the match, we're all tied at two between Penn State and Nebraska. It's number seven in the country against number eight in the country for a defining fifth set. So we are even in the match, and look at this. Checking the points, we're dead even. <laughs> dead even. 89 to 89. In the fifth set, you have to refocus. You know, I think you need to stay aggressive. You don't want to back down at all, both from the service line and offensively. Uh, you know, there's something about managing errors, and we saw both teams kind of making some unforced errors that gave easy points to their opponent, and you really have to manage those in a 15-point set. Again, as a reminder, it's the first to 15. He got a win by two in the fifth set. Isn't it fitting that this matchup would go five once again? Now four straight times that has happened in this series. Nebraska to serve. Parker again with the tip. Set up this time to the right side to Kathy, and Penn State strikes first. Yeah, Kathy driving in quick, finding that seam between the block. Wow, that was close, because that could have been a stuffed block, a big time stuffed block, but right there you see a little gap between the two blockers, perfectly executed there by Penn State. Aims over to Sun, who had a really big fourth set. She starts out with a really big hit in the fifth. Yeah, she goes hard cross court because the middle blocker there is playing cross court defense for Penn State. Probably not her top skill, so look at, she aggressively goes after that deep cross court shot. First contact from one. Exactly the way Penn State would want it. White with the bump set to Kathy. That's the touch. There's the coverage. Oh, White keeping it alive. Back set to Sweet. White tried it again. Point Nebraska. You got your mouth open. <laughs> I am just astounded by the level of play right now. So aggressive, great defense, saving the ball, not letting the ball hit the floor. Knuckles had some great defensive moves there. Two of the premier volleyball programs in the country putting on a show for us tonight. Ford went up to reach in that long wingspan. It'll be White with that high setup. Kathy getting to it. Sweet again. There's Blossom. Hampton with the setup to Parker down the line. Talk about everyone getting involved on the Penn State side. Yeah, you know, the, the defense is incredible, really making the hitters work for the points. Look at that save right there by Blossom. And then right down the line, getting a touch off the block, Penn State. That's Hampton, your DS, your sophomore, with the assist. Putting it away. Cubic. No room for error in a fifth set. Yeah, we talk about this resembling a boxing match, and they're just taking big swings and punches at each other right now in the fifth. to Parker. 
Coverage on the block, Gurel. Putting it away, Kubik again. Another punch from the freshman. Now, when the ball is tight, look at how Penn State manages this point. You want to keep it off the net. It's better to let your backcourt play it than trickle it right over top of the net. That's an overpass kill. Two-point edge now for Nebraska. To hold in the middle. Penn State trying the quick hitter. Here's Sweet. Went up against the double block, Corral and Horde. Horde again getting a piece. To Parker. Money, Penn State. Well, in that play, it's important to note Gorel played the ball and was out of it. She could not be an attacker. Take a look. Penn State's, or Nebraska's block moves over, but despite that, there's just a little bit of line. Parker showing her finesse and her skill by hitting that line perfectly. One ace in this match. Again, she misses long. Time and time again tonight. Parker saying, my bad, she's got to shake it off because now her team needs her to be a really aggressive swing from the backcourt. Offense wins these ones. They need all hitters, front and backcourt, to be dialed in right now. There's White. Correll. Free ball here for Nebraska. There's the stiffer and slide. Just missing line. been in rhythm. We haven't seen Stiverance with the type of just fierce attacks on that slide that we're used to seeing. We also haven't seen the ball that's set right behind Haynes uh, to Stiverance. So take a look and see if we see more of that. Well, she's looked off tonight. They go right back to her though. Off speed is down. And that's the set that I was anticipating. The quick right behind. So it's easier to set that than it is to set the slide. <laughs> They're talking about wanting to just hammer the ball. And again, little tip, because that's all she could do. <laughs> She's a little surprised it scored, but she'll take it. Parker handles. So they go back to Burrell's side. Gone to Burrell about 28 times. They're stuck. Alexi's son has been training to hit that flat shot off of the blocker's hands. She's been spectacular tonight with just that shot. Scored so many times. Blossom setting up her up. Son with the off speed. Penn State with an opportunity here. Kathy, a tough ball to handle. Son again, Corral is there. Huge block for the Nittany Lions. On a system you know where it's going. Penn State's block, anticipating that. Being up and over, no seam in the block, nowhere for Lexi Sun to go. Now she elevates so well. <laughs> she knows she wants to smack it, but anything scores like that, it all chalks up as a point. You need a point, you go to your All-American. Nebraska, the first to eight in the fifth set. The fifth and deciding set from Lincoln. serving. Blossom comes over to get it. Kathy with the swing. Cubic handles. Sun again going cross court. Oh, that dig there from Hampton. They'll go to Sun once again. White response. 
Defensively, a huge sequence here for Penn State. Parker. Pachos at the net! Wow! Ames, one of the smallest kids out there, winning the joust. The crowd loves it. Let's take a look. She goes up. Second one to contact the ball, usually wins the joust at the net, and a celebration to follow. Nebraska pumped. And we have our first Russ Rose challenge coming in the fifth. And remember, Nebraska actually gets a challenge. They pick one up because we've gone to five. So John Cook does have a challenge, too, if he wants to use it in this match. He is challenging a net violation on this play. Yeah, there's, I don't see a net. I don't see a net violation on that play. Let's see if there was a net violation prior to the Yeah, we don't the joust. see there, but they're going back and looking at the swing before the joust. So on the block of Nebraska, let's take a look here. Well, that's a tough one because the ball hit the it's tape. The it hit the top of the net. And as it hits the top of the net. So there's actually the two possibilities there. They could correct, yeah. be looking at. The so we're going to go back and, and look at that whole sequence now. Saying it could have happened early in this rally. And we're looking for a Nebraska net violation. Amy, do you see anything there? I did not. Yeah. Call stance. The only thing I saw was Schwarzenbach's hair hitting the net, and that's perfectly fine. She got a pretty long ponytail as she was turning around. It hit the net, but that's completely legal. First challenge for Russ Rose tonight. Four-point edge here for Nebraska. Winner takes the match. First to 15. You got to win by two. Kathy hits it long. Nebraska can smell it. And this is where those errors are magnified. You cannot make too many errors in a fifth set. And the man who never changes his expression knows that he's got to call the timeout. To try to stall any sort of momentum. A 3 nothing scoring run here for Nebraska and a five-point edge. Yeah, I've seen some wild things happen uh, in fifth uh, set and uh, you know you cannot rule Penn State out momentum shifts are huge uh, they just have to forget about the score at this point and just play one ball at a time you can't get too caught up um, in, in what happened prior to this just chip away one ball at a time I want to remind you that Penn State trailed by as many as six points to Michigan State in the first set of that match and then rallied and came back to one it so Penn State knows all about comebacks. And Nebraska, though, it is tough to take on a, a team that has this kind of balanced attack with the kills coming tonight. Yeah, you know, it, it causes so much stress on the blockers. And so the coaching staff tries to figure out what the tendencies are. Well, the tendencies are, it's spread out. And so it's hard to manage that. Um, and it all really is established by good first contact. You can only spread the offense out um, if that ball is passed up to the net and you've got some options there. So Penn State has to try to play the point, not the scoreboard right now, trailing by five. 
your sophomore setter for Nebraska. How about that? 51 assists to 22 digs. What a match for her. Yeah, backcourt defense for her tonight has been stellar off the charts. Indiana and Purdue, she had back-to-back 50-plus -back assist matches. Got another one tonight. Out of that timeout, they go to Gray in the middle. Nebraska still trying to serve short, trying to get the middle out of the attack. But that time, Gray putting the ball, half-speed shot, but still in a right-back area of the court. So Nebraska's strategy has been consistent throughout the entire match. Some defensive subs now for Nebraska. And Miller with the first contact, the block, wow, Kathy. Kathy demonstrating great one-on-one -on -one blocking here. Look at her take off, taking away cross court. You can't take away every shot, but she knows Schwarzenbach tends to go cross court on her slide. So nice discipline on the block for a point. Oh, big cross court pass and the big stuff. Penn State has found something. Yeah, we talk about defense frustrating your opponent. Right now, the block is too much for Nebraska's offense to handle. One-on-one -on -one blocks right now for Penn State dominating, and they're back in this fifth set. Three straight points coming out of that timeout for Penn State. And there you see a double block. <laughs> Lots to celebrate there. Isn't it fitting that tonight we go five sets? It is the fourth straight time that this series has gone five. And a flashback to last year. Each of these teams met each other once or twice in the regular season back to the October 13th. Lexi Sun playing in her first series against Penn State. But it was the home team that actually won both of these matches here last year. And this win for Penn State was significant for this team because it was the first time that anyone on that roster had beaten Nebraska in their careers. Yeah, you think about how talented that team is to have done that. A wonderful display in that match by Penn State. And how about a year to the day is the last time that these two teams met on this very court. Penn State was looking to sweep the series. Nebraska had other ideas in mind. Nebraska's so tough to play at home. The crowd was getting into it, really helped them in their execution there in the fifth set. Same thing we're seeing <laughs> today. Started off the fifth just on fire. Penn State, though, inching their way back into this one. Five of the last six meetings in this series have gone to five. Here's Haynes, who's had that incredible match, looking for Spawn. Penn State will have none of it. What a tremendous display of blocking. Watch how Haynes is backing up to get the set. There's only one option. She's front row right now with Schwarzenbach and Sun, so can't really hide where the ball's going. Good decision there from Haynes. Almost got a kill there from the back row. It's Cubic. Defensively, Penn State has been all over it. The last few points. Here's Sun again with the try. Parker. Bring the tell. The block that time for Nebraska. Wow, Lexi Sun being asked to do a ton in that rally. A couple swings back to back as that front row, left side swing, and then to end the point with a block against Parker. Last four points have been blocks. And you see Haynes is back to serve, which means there are three hitters right now in the front court for Nebraska. That's a little bit more balanced, and it's easier for Lexi Sun because she has Jazz Sweep up there to complement her. Blossom trying to set up Kathy. Five straight points, six of the block. Both teams, wow, just wonderful blocking, hip to hip. 
interesting way that this match is going, this fifth set in particular. Both teams were quiet getting stuff blocks. Now that's all that's happening. Stuff block after stuff block. So exciting. Atmosphere and what a block from Nebraska the last couple of points. Yeah, that was one on one. Lexi Sun and here double block, but it goes off the hands of Lexi Sun. So she's doing a tremendous job right now of lining up with the hitter's approach, sealing the net, really challenging the hitter to hit around her block. points away from Nebraska wrapping it up. Team blocks for both sides has been huge in the fifth. Both teams have the setter coming out of the back court, so both teams three attackers in the front court. And it's your setter, Haynes, to serve. Blossom sets up the middle for Parker. Ooh, quick to the net. Yeah, back row attack there from the back row. Yeah, back row attack. Haynes is trying to say she wasn't attacking the ball. She was trying to set the ball. John Cook. Frustrated with that call. Big point there for Penn State again. It was tight to the net. Here's Haynes this time. Sun up against it. Point. Lexi Sun, point Nebraska. You can see how difficult it is to play those balls off the blocker's hands. Penn State making a tremendous effort to save that ball that is deflected off the blocker's hands going wide off the court. 20 kills tonight. attack, got the touch for Horn. Just like that. Serve and pass. Penn State with a crucial serve receive there, able to run their middle, their bread and butter tonight, the middles. Keaton Holcomb, remember, she was so big to end the fourth. Can she respond to the moment in the fifth? by Nicklin Haynes, moving forward, setting back. Jess Sweet coming through, big point, 14th point for Nebraska. Next one for Nebraska will win it. Match point, here we go. Horde puts it away, we're still playing. Penn State not backing down. It's been so important for Penn State to run middle. They can only do it off of a good pass. This is interesting. They sub out Parker, who was back to serve. Yeah. Well, Parker's been slightly off tonight. She Russ has. Rose going with uh, another. She's a captain. Yeah, Kristen Krause. Yeah, Krause is back there. First time. Match point number two, the stuff. Great coaching move. Kraus serving aggressively, forcing the pass. 
to be off the net. A more predictable set here as Nicklin Haynes is limited to where she can go and the block seals it. Again, another point off of a block. But what a move by Ross Rose. Inserts one of his captains. Now against Iowa last night, she served three straight points for Penn State. Yep. You get a hunch when you're a coach, you put her in a big moment. Yeah, you know, you know, you've been watching them all season long and you know how they respond to pressure and, you know, I think she's done a, a tremendous job last night and he knew that and so gives her the nod tonight and that's, uh, that's, that's what you have to do, you know, that's your job. Again, first to 15, but you gotta win by two. And we sit at match point number three because Penn State just won't back down. So all you want to do with the serve is force the setter off the net to set something predictable. And there it is right there. The block is lined up. The backcourt defense is also, they also have time to line up around the block. But it's been the block on both sides of the net that is really one point here in the fifth set. So Russ Rose turns to his red shirt junior, Kristen Kraus, to try to rally this team to tie it in the fifth. Point, we're underway. Hames to Kubik, the freshman, hits it. And another epic battle between Penn State and Nebraska. Oh, Kubik, you live for that moment. The game depends on you. You go up with a big swing. went to five on this court. Nebraska won it a year ago, and Nebraska again wins it this year. It was a battle. It was everything we thought it might be. It went to five, and Nebraska wins it over Penn State. Lexi Sun led the way with 20 kills, and she joins us now. What was the ultimate difference maker for you guys to pull this one out, Lexi? Um, I think it was just us focusing on being aggressive um, and wanting to win and wanting to play hard. And yeah, I think we did. We finished really strong. Lexi, 20 kills, but a blocking clinic you put on in the fifth set. How does it feel to win with the contribution you made both in um, offense and defense? Um, I think this game we were all focused on getting touches and being on assignment blocking. So I think that defense is really important and obviously it's great to get some blocks for sure. Lexi, you, you guys fell in five sets to Purdue just most recently, and you had to hit kind of the reset button this weekend. How did maybe falling short against Purdue help you kind of rally here this weekend? Um, for sure. I think that we just had to focus this week on coming together and playing as a team and leaning on each other and playing with each other for each other, and I think we did that tonight. Lexi, final question here. What does winning this rivalry mean to you? What's the locker room going to be like when you run in there? <laughs> we're excited. It's going to be awesome. We're really excited. Yeah, we're going to celebrate in there for sure. Lexi, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.
get a match high 20 kills. They went to her 54 times. And Nebraska wins in five. A battle between the number seven team in the country and the number eight team in the country.